Hello, my name is Joel Senders, and I'm going to be speaking to you today about studying your Bible. For most of us, studying our Bible means spending a small amount of time each and every day, or every other day, or maybe once a week, or maybe not so often, reading our Bibles. Now, a couple of things there. We obviously need to be spending regular time in the Word. The less time we spend, the more time we fill our brains with worldly knowledge and more self-sufficient we start to become. The more time we spend away from the scriptures, the more we subconsciously justify ourselves in keeping away from them. And ultimately, we stop relying on God's strength rather than our own. And that's quite obviously not a very good thing. So if you're not regularly in God's word, fix that and do what you have to do to make it a priority. But a little more on topic, I'm sure that most of us think of reading the Bible and studying the Bible as the same activity. Now, of course, there is some overlap there, as you can't really study the Bible without reading it. But I'll always remember a conversation I had with a certain professor at Moody Bible. He told me that reading and studying are two very different things in practice. And that kind of always stuck with me because most of us think these things are synonymous. Let me give you an example. Let's go ahead and read Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, when he said, The voice of one crying, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. All right, now that was a relatively short section to read, right? And if I were reading my Bible, that's how I would read it. I wouldn't stop or anything. I would just read right through it like that. But think about how much we read over that we didn't even bother to look at. John is preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Do you all know what and where Judea is? He quotes Isaiah. Do we know which passage John is quoting? Is the rest of that passage of Isaiah important at all? Do we need to know who Isaiah was? Does understanding the Isaiah passage more help us to understand John's message? What about John? Who is he? Why is he dressed in camel's hair? And why does he eat locusts and wild honey? What does that have anything to do with the story? Why does it mention that? It says all of the region about the Jordan were going out to him. What is this region? What kind of people does it include? Were they all Jews? Were they all practicing Jews? He was baptizing them. Was he baptizing them in the same manner that we Christians baptize? What did the Jewish people believe about baptism? And is it the same thing that we believe as Christians? Now, I'm not about to answer all of those questions. That's not my purpose here today. But think about all of the things we just read in Matthew 3, a relatively short section but more appropriately, how much we read over. If you're just reading your Bible at home and not studying it, you're likely doing the same thing. This should demonstrate to you the difference between reading and studying. Now, just to clarify, I'm not saying reading your Bible isn't important. That's how this all starts. Read it, get introduced, become familiar with it, memorize it, but don't let it end there. The major focus of today's lesson is how to study your Bible. How do we answer questions like the ones we just came up with referring to Matthew 3? Well, you could simply ask someone for the answers, like a pastor at NBC or someone you know who is well-versed in the scriptures. But as the proverb goes, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So rather than get used to being spoon-fed the information, let's learn how to do our own studying and our own research. 
The truth is that most of us don't study because we don't know how to. And so I'm going to give you six quick pointers that you can use to help you along in studying the Bible. First, ask questions. Just like we did with Matthew, the Matthew 3 passage we read earlier, start off by asking specific questions so you have a place to start. Not necessarily to other people. Ask the questions to yourself so you can train yourself in answering them on your own. The key here is to not pass over something you don't know or don't understand while reading. Write down the question and research them yourself. If you're asking good questions and are intent on finding answers, you will be good at studying the Bible. You still need to answer the questions, of course, but if you don't ever ask them, you won't have a clear path for study. You will read over things that you should learn about. The five W's are always a good place to start. Asking who, what, where, when, and why. Asking questions is a really good place to start when studying. Second, Determine the literary form of what you're reading. Is it history? Is it prophecy? Is it a discourse between two people? Is it poetry? Depending on the category, you may need to adjust your method of study. For example, you'll often find symbolism in prophecy or apocalyptic texts. Be aware of the literary form. It's usually easy to classify it once you start reading. Third, pay attention to the context. If you just started listening to this lesson right this very second, you'd probably be a little confused regarding what it is that I'm talking about. It's helpful to hear the entire context of the situation in any form of interpretation, and that's no different when it comes to the Bible. Knowing who is speaking, whom they're speaking to, or whom the, the recipients are, what the subject matter is, any cultural or geographic information, basically the general background, as well as the foreground, all of this is going to help you better understand the text and also help you avoid errors. I'm sure most of us are familiar with what it means to take something out of context. So we want to avoid this when studying the Bible. Determining the context will help to ensure that you get the interpretation right. Fourth, look for textual clues to aid you in your interpretation. There are some more specific clues you can look for to help further deepen your study. And here's just one example. When you see the word therefore, ask yourself, what's it there for? The word therefore always indicates a conclusion to a previous idea is about to follow. If you start reading a section of your Bible and it starts with the word therefore, it's wise to back up and read the preceding section so you can understand the reasoning for the author's conclusion. You'll see this quite often in texts written by the Apostle Paul. Other words that might follow this pattern are so, then, or because. So you always want to be on the lookout for clues like this that can better help us understand the author's original intent in writing. Point five, use tools to aid your study. We live in a time when there is no shortage of high quality Bible, Bible study tools for free, right at your fingertips. You can sit through a seminary course for free on iTunes U, you can read biblical commentaries from well-renowned professors and scholars for free on sites like Blue Letter Bible or ccel.org, or even purchase a serious Bible study tool like Accordance. There's also amazing hard copy Bible study tools, they're usually expensive, uh, but available for purchase at places like christianbook.com. If you're near a Christian school or a college, you may even be able to use their library to get access to all sorts of tools. And Minooka Bible Church has some books available uh, downstairs in the Sunday school rooms that are available to use. I personally recommend commentaries for serious study because they'll be able to aid in determining some of the things we already discussed, like context. If you ever have a, a very specific question, you'll have a place to refer to for a well-rounded answer. And finally, the sixth point, ask more questions. So in this final pointer, I'll circle back to the first point. That way, this is more of a cycle you can continually work through. But when you get to the end of your study for the day, ask some more questions and applicational questions like, what does this mean for my daily life? Or what can I learn about God from this text? Questions like these should help you apply the information you learned in your study. 
Sometimes these questions are easier to answer than other times based on what you're studying, but an effort should be made to apply what it is that you've learned. The answers should be different each time you sit down to study because you should always be learning something new. So to conclude, study your Bible. Study your Bible. That word should have new meaning for you now. The author of Hebrews says, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God has revealed himself to us through his word. And if we wish to know him more, we must do so by immersing ourselves each and every day in his word, which he delivered once and for all unto us. Thank you, and God bless.